Hello, this is Dr. Michael Hoke, and this is an instructional step-by-step -step guide to Brain Lab fMRI language processing. Let's get started. So obviously first you want to choose iPlan Cranial, and you want to choose your study or studies by date. Check marks show that you have selected the studies of interest, then you hit next. And you want to load your language bold data, so you choose every bold paradigm and, and the 3D structural sequences you want, like an MP rage or a flare space. Brain Lab has its own motion correction, so you don't need to load your MoCo series if you obtain those. And also, if you want to superimpose tractography data, your DTI tensor data, this is the step where you would click on that as well. Again, select everything with check marks and hit next. Here's the motion correction step. Choose the bold paradigms and 3D sequences and make sure smoothing and motion correction are checked. Then click next. Choose image fusion and then hit OK. You can now auto fuse all sequences. Click on each sequence in the fusion list and then auto fusion. And once all have blue check marks, then click go to at the top. Now for actual processing, uh, you want to click on the bold MRI mapping and then click OK. Choose the first language paradigm. In this case, uh, we have verb generation, then hit OK. So you now want to define this first language task. So we'll choose verb gen preset since we loaded verb gen. And if no presets are available at your center, you can create new presets with this tab here highlighted by the arrow. At our institution we make sure the first task uh, is set to start at four seconds just that's just how we do it and task and rest length should be 20 seconds. Your institution may and likely has different time to task starting so make sure you know those you can just ask your MRI tech and then we want to choose a color then click OK. So now we're ready to start our analysis. So a statistical threshold, in this case a 6.4, narrows the activation to the left frontal operculum, uh, otherwise known as Broca's area, highlighted here with an arrow. That's good. That's what we expect. But we'll see that maybe this is too narrow of a threshold, and we want to hit this scroll bar that's highlighted with the circle and uh, bring our threshold down to 2.0, kind of make it more liberal, a lower threshold. And that's better for conjunction analysis, which we'll get to in a bit. Here you can see that just eyeballing it, there is a left language hemisphere dominance. The laterality index is favoring the left and you have a good Broca's area activation, very robust and also a posterior temporal, likely some receptive Wernicke's area activation. So now in Brain Lab, you want to create 3D objects. That's how you can manipulate the data and make plans for your neurosurgeon colleagues. Make sure the eye icon for the task you want, again, verb generation in this instance, is open. Create 3D objects and then label verb gen and pick a color. In this case, it'll be blue. Then hit OK. So this is your final 3D object. Click on this disk icon to save and export the data to your neurosurgery navigation software and then hit OK. So now this brings us to the next part, it's the advanced language analysis of bold data. What we just went through is conventional, one task at a time. With conjunction analysis, we're going to show activation areas that intersect or overlap amongst multiple language tasks to increase our specificity and increase our laterality index so we can see essential language center localization and kind of more easily ignore uh, noise in our data. It's also easier for trainees to understand the language data. So Here's our verb generation task from before, and now in addition to the verb generation, we will process other uh, language tasks for this patient. So we'll load our, sec our second language task. So we'll click go to, then back to bold MRI mapping, then we'll click on OK. 
and we'll load our second language task, in this case word generation. So we'll choose that task and then hit OK. And then we'll define our parameters, keeping the same parameters from before, of starting at 4 seconds and then blocks of 20 seconds on and 20 seconds off. And we'll choose a different color this time. Before it was blue, so now we'll choose red. And then we'll hit OK. And then we'll start bold analysis again. This should be familiar now. And here's our second task, word generation. Again, we'll set our threshold to a liberal T value of 2.0. And we'll click on Create 3D Object. And then we'll give a name to the object. In this case, again, word generation. We'll pick red and then hit OK. And then we'll repeat all those steps again for our other language tasks. So we'll click Go To, Bold MRI Mapping, and OK. And remember to keep your threshold constant at 2.0. And here we'll repeat all these steps that we just went through. And try and use a different color for each task. It's just easier that way to remember and identify which task is which. So here we went through all these language tasks and made 3D objects. And we have a category task, passive listening, sentence completion, word generation, and verb generation. All the eye icons are open. And we'll go to object creation and hit OK. And we will select advanced manipulation. So here's the Advanced Manipulation or Intersection tab. You open the Logical Operations tab, rather, and then we'll click on Intersection. And that's what we want for the conjunction analysis. We'll choose our first task. That was uh, Verb Generation in blue. And then we'll choose our second task, Word Generation in red. And we'll click this black box for the Preview Generation. And then we'll choose a new color for this 3D object that was based on the intersection of blue and red. So naturally, I went with purple. And then we'll click on Generate. And you can click on Close to now view your new object. Or you can stay in this window for further conjunction processing. So we'll stay in this window because we have more language tasks to add to this. So here's our second intersection. And we'll choose the object we just made, the first order intersection object. And then we'll choose the third language task. In this case, it's Category. And we'll click that black box again for Preview. And we'll choose a different color this time when we generate the second order intersection object. And then we'll hit generate. And we'll repeat this again for the third order object. Choose a different color, hit generate. And one more time for fourth order. And now that you're finally done, you can click on the close button. So we just went from all of this, five language tasks overlapping, to with our conjunction analysis or intersection advanced manipulation in Brain Lab to the areas that are essential or common to all those language tasks. And you can easily see that this patient with a left cortical dysplasia of the perisylvian Wernicke area is definitely left language dominant. So this is our final five language task conjunction 3D object in green. And then you can rename that as Final Conjunction or whatever uh, you want to name it. And then click Open Edit Box to open this Edit tab and rename it. And then type in uh, Final Conjunction and then hit OK. So the, the interpretation, pretty straightforward in this case. We have a left language lateralization. Um, a good hint. I think about 80 to 85% of the time is that the language part of the SMA or the pre-SMA is on the same side as the language dominant hemisphere. And here it's circled on the left. And then here we can see pretty confidently our language centers, uh, Broca's area and Wernicke's area in the cortical dysplasia here. So we, don't, we want to stay away from that in our report. And we also can see a pretty well-defined posterior superior temporal sulcus association language center. For completeness, we can superimpose our DTI tractography. So if you want to open plan content and then open the eye icon for the tracks you have created, you can superimpose the arcuate fasciculus in red, 
the language track and the motor track, the cortical spinal track in blue onto your uh, conjunction language data. And then with BrainLab, you can measure distances of the 3D objects to the margins of the lesion, whether it's in this case a cortical dysplasia, or it could also be an AVM or a tumor, cavernous malformation. For the icons, the, the one that's labeled D is the tape measure. Screenshot obviously is a camera. And then when you're done, you can save your plan with this disk icon. So thank you. See you next time.